have to use tools that are available to us so we know that work. New mask requirements. This morning we're breaking down how the new mandatory call for face coverings can impact your daily routine. As several states move into their final stages of reopening, large crowds continue to grow. We're looking across state line to Idaho as the impact of growing gatherings hits close to home. Cloudy skies and showers as a cold front makes its way through the northwest. We'll talk about what we see this afternoon and about the 80 degree temperatures that are still to come. I do not think that being in a mental health crisis um, that you should be condemned to your death. A group of families across Washington state have been forever changed by stories of police using deadly force. This morning, we share those stories with you. Up with Krim starts right now with Jen York, Joshua Robinson, Evan Narani, and Dana Marie McNichol. Starting Friday, face coverings will be required while in public in Washington. And this morning, we're asking you to join the conversation. Text us at 509-448-2000 and let us know what you think. Coming up, Dana Marie McNichol will tell us what will be allowed under the new rule. Well, welcome back and thanks so much for joining us this morning on Up With Creme. Great to have you with us. Uh, it's been a hot week so far, Joshua, but this morning things are kind of cooling down. Yeah, it was one of those days where I just gotten used to not needing to turn the heater on in the mornings and I woke up this morning and I was like, okay, all right, we got a little bit of a change coming our way. I guess I got to talk to Evan about what I should be doing each morning because clearly I don't know what to do. Well, my secret is to, <laughs> you got to leave the windows open overnight yeah. and into the morning hours and then you can close them once the afternoon comes around and it really starts warming up, you know? Okay. All right, that's a good tip. That's that's my little tip. Even though, hey, overnight, it's it like right now, it feels gorgeous outside. It feels great. Yeah, definitely. If it's been a little too hot for you this week, things are kind of cooling down just slightly. We do want to take a live look outside this morning. Evan, what else can we expect as we get our day started? Yeah, that's right, Jen. So we are right now outside of the Creme 2 studios on our outdoor weather center where we're able to give you the forecast, of course, but we're also able to be out in the elements with you. And this allows us to uh, just look outside and see what we're seeing here around our region. We saw a few showers that came through about an hour ago. We were out here and we had a little bit of a drizzle coming down. You can see what we're talking about as far as where that precipitation has been. A little bit of a closer look at Spokane shows you how most of our showers have now moved farther off to to the east and we are moving toward partly cloudy conditions. That's what we're expecting by this afternoon. There is quite a breeze outside as we start off the morning. That's important to note. You can see those sustained speeds down at the bottom of your screen here that indicate southwesterly winds that move to uh, westerly or uh, west southwest winds. Uh, temperatures are still going to warm up, so it's important to note that despite the showers and even some thunderstorms that we saw a few hours ago and now into your six o'clock hour, we're still going to warm up to the 80s. We've got 87 degrees as that forecast high by the time we get to this afternoon, it looks like as we uh, move toward your wind speeds, that's going to be a concern as far as fire danger goes. As temperatures warm up and we move toward those drier conditions, our fire danger increases. So we see our sustained speeds right now, mostly in the single digits around the region. We'll keep you updated on if we see any change uh, or any significant change in your wind speeds. But for now, I'll send things back over to you guys. All right, Evan, thank you so much. We'll now we do want to take a live look at the roads this morning, taking a live look at Interstate 90 this morning at Freya Street. The morning commute getting underway. The roads don't look too packed. Look like there's no backups to report, at least in that area of I-90 this morning. Well, coming up this Friday, face coverings will be mandatory in Washington State. And I know this certainly has a lot of you at home talking since this was announced yesterday. Washington Governor Jay Inslee announced the new rule along with what we can expect moving into the end of this week. Dane Marie McNichol is joining us live now with more on what we need to know and walk us through these new rules. Good morning. Well, no matter what rules your county may be following right now, come Friday, everybody across Washington state will have to wear a face mask if you're older than five years old. So this morning, many of you are waking up to this news. We want you to join our conversation. Should face masks be mandated statewide? You have a lot of time to vote this morning. You can do that on our Creme 2 mobile app or on creme.com slash vote. Let us know what you think, as this is something that is a big announcement 
that is happening. So this came after um, Washington announced an uptick in COVID-19 cases and businesses are reopening and we're seeing that as a result. So the numbers really do concern Governor Jay Inslee, who says wearing a face mask or face covering is the only thing proven to help stop the spread. We may think that oh, we're done with the virus, but the virus is not done with us. Is this just a hypothetical concern? Unfortunately, it is not. The new mask mandate has a lot of information that comes with it, so many of you have questions. We're here to answer some of those top questions. One we received this morning is, what kind of mask do I need? Great question. The short answer is any kind of face covering is acceptable. It just needs to cover your nose and mouth. That could range from more heavy duty masks like N45 or surgical masks to lower tech cloth coverings like a scarf or even a bandana. So the easy answer is you probably already have one of these at home. Another question we got is, where do I need to wear a mask? Well, you're required to wear a face covering in any public indoor setting or in public outdoor settings where social distancing isn't possible. Basically, if you're close in proximity with people you don't live with, wear a mask. However, if you're outdoors and able to stay at least six feet apart from people not in your own household, you do not need a mask. On Twitter, Governor Jay Inslee reminded everyone that wearing face coverings reduces the spread of coronavirus, but there is still much we have to do, including practicing physical distancing, washing your hands, getting tested for COVID-like symptoms, and staying home if you are sick. Now, he did follow that tweet with saying, mask up, Washington, let's beat this virus. Now, whether you're inside or outside starting Friday, you're going to need to wear one of these face masks. That's really, really important. So uh, starting the conversation with us this morning, we just want to know if you think those masks should be mandated statewide. You could vote now in our CREM2 mobile app. Also, take advantage of our texting feature. If you have questions about this new mandate, text them to us at 509-448-2000. There's someone in our CREM2 newsroom looking at those questions and getting those answers sent directly to your phone. So with this new announcement, we just want to make sure everyone has the most updated, accurate information. Live in downtown Spokane, I'm Dana Marie McNichol. Well, Dana Marie, thank you so much. And we're seeing uh, some of those results coming in really split 50-50 this morning. So we again invite you to weigh in this morning and let us know what your thoughts are on the required masks here in Washington. In the meantime, this morning, we are hearing from families impacted by the use of deadly force. Yesterday, the NAACP brought families together to tell their stories. Take a listen. No matter what was going on, if my cousin was in a mental health crisis, I do not think that being in a mental health crisis um, that you should be condemned to your death. Now that was a family member of Charlena Lyles. Seattle police shot and killed her in 2017 while responding to a burglary call. NAACP leaders hope sharing these stories shines a light on voter approved initiative 940. It is intended to improve police accountability. It is the same initiative family members say Tacoma police did not follow after the death of Manuel Ellis in March. With I-940, there's a lot of things put in place with identifying um, or notifying a family member, um, giving you a liaison within 72 hours, also having um, someone independently come in and check out what's going on or what happened. Now, expert ruled Ellis's death a homicide. Four officers involved in his death are now on leave. Now we want to check back in with Joshua in studio with a look at today's headlines. Hi, Joshua. Thank you very much, Jen. Yeah, 609 now on our Wednesday morning. Time for a morning rush. More news in less time. Spokane police have arrested a 36-year-old woman in relation to a string of car fires in North Spokane that happened Monday morning. SPD says Stephanie Register was picked up by police at the Spokane Transit Authority Plaza last night and a total of 10 U-Haul trucks, five private vehicles and five garages were damaged in the Monday morning fires. Register was booked into jail for second degree arson and more charges are pending. A man is dead this morning after a shooting involving two people in North Spokane. The shooting happened yesterday outside of Christ Our Hope Church on Augusta Avenue and Monroe Street. 
Police say that the suspect has been detained and is cooperating with authorities. Authorities also say the shooting happened after a fight. Monroe Street was closed in both directions for about four blocks, but is reopened this morning. Two men are in the hospital this morning after a helicopter crash near Rathdrum. The crash happened yesterday on the northwest corner of Highway 41 and Wyoming Avenue. Cooney County deputies say that the two men who were in the helicopter at the time of the crash have serious but non-life-threatening injuries. Deputies are still asking people to avoid the area if possible as the FAA continues to investigate the crash. A federal judge has denied a request by American women's soccer players to allow an immediate appeal of his decision to throw out their claim of unequal pay against the U.S. Soccer Federation. The judge scheduled a trial for September on the player's remaining claim of discriminatory work conditions. Back in May, this same judge ruled that women could not provide or could not prove discrimination rather over how much they had been paid. And that's your morning rush. More news in less time. Let us know what's happening in your neighborhood by sharing the hashtag up with creme on social media. Taking a look this morning at what's trending as states across the country continue to move further into their own reopening plans. That also means big crowds of people are now becoming more and more common. Let's welcome in our Nicole Hernandez this morning, joining us live with a closer look at how this national trend is hitting close to home and in the Northwest. Good morning, Nicole. Hey, good morning, Joshua. So scrolling it through social media, you might have noticed pictures of packed bars, beaches, big crowds in some of those cities ha that have continued to open up their states over the past few weeks. So here's a look at some of what we've been seeing across the country. You can see bars and beaches packed full when cities started reopening. Phoenix specifically had a pretty short stay at home order compared to us, but the problem now, their coronavirus cases are spiking. They've seen thousands of new cases and dozens of new deaths every day. So that got me thinking, since here in Idaho, uh, we are in phase four now over across state line, should we be worried about seeing bigger crowds like that? So uh, we were able to talk with the health district, but first I wanna give you a look at this. This is how packed full the grandstands at State Line Speedway were just this past weekend. Even though the racetrack was encouraging social distancing and wearing masks, you can see that didn't exactly happen. The Idaho Panhandle Health District says they're worried about people not following guidelines. We're concerned because it doesn't seem like everyone is practicing the precautions that we've that we've asked them to. You know, the mask wearing, the cloth face coverings, um, the physical distancing, the avoiding crowds. So this graph here shows what Idaho's cases look like from the start of the outbreak to the beginning of this past week. You can see how when social distancing was happening, we had very few cases. But then as the state started to open back up, that spike went back up. Two days ago, the Panhandle Health District reported 15 new cases. They said even though it doesn't sound like a lot, that is a big increase for the area. Now the one thing the Health District kept stressing with me over that Zoom interview is this. Keep washing your hands, keep wearing those masks, keep social distancing because doing those things actually work. The goal here, of course, is to keep those cases down and make sure there's no more deaths in our area. Live from home, I'm Nicole Hernandez. Thank you very much for joining us with that update this morning, Nicole. We appreciate it here on Up With Krim. It's 613 now. And as we mentioned, starting Friday in Washington, face masks will be a requirement statewide as more counties nationwide are issuing similar orders. But will they make a difference? Let's connect the dots. For some, the debate over face masks has become a political fight, but new facts are emerging about what happened in states that mandated their use. Let's connect the dots. When coronavirus started to spread in the U.S., governments in at least 15 states and the District of Columbia issued orders requiring face masks. A new study by University of Iowa professors looks at what happened after those orders were put in place. It found that up to 450,000 cases may have been prevented by those mandates. The researchers did take into account other measures like shelter in place orders and social distancing and ran the numbers. What they found was 21 days after face coverings were mandated, hundreds of thousands of cases were averted. But the study also found not all face mask orders are created equal. 
New York was one of the strictest with masks required in public or in any place where you can't practice social distancing. Other states only required them for businesses and still others only for employees in those businesses. When it came to that employee-only face mask mandate, researchers found no evidence of a decline in COVID-19 growth. Still coming up this morning on Up With Cram, an update out of NASCAR after someone reported a noose in Bubba Wallace's garage stall. Coming up, why the FBI says no charges will be filed. And have you updated your iPhone with the latest iOS software? Well, coming up in our next half hour, we'll take a look at why the update is getting a lot of attention online. And a few showers clearing out, but otherwise a partly cloudy day ahead. We'll talk about our chance for thunderstorms this afternoon and what the weekend looks like. And the All in Washington concert for COVID-19 relief is tonight. The goal is to raise money and give back and support workers and families impacted by coronavirus. And it's featuring a load of Northwest artists like Pearl Jam, Macklemore, Brandi Carlisle, Ben Gibber, Dave Matthews, Sir Mix-a-Lot, and our local singer here, Chihuahua native Alan Stone, just to name a few. So that again airs tonight starting at 7 p.m. right here on Creme 2 and it will be followed by a special primetime newscast. We hope that you join us. You're watching Up With Creme.